Today, we visit with Ira Half II, a witness to history whose family continued the township's long tradition of farming with the purchase of a 40-acre property in the 1930s that they called Stucille Farm. That farm was on the same property where you now see the township museum, library, and the human services building. One notable remnant of the farming era remains on the property, the Stucille Water Tower. With its lighthouse-type facade, it stands tall as a unique testament to Ocean Township's and New Jersey's agricultural past. Mr. Haupt is involved in the preservation effort of the tower, and today he generously shares his fond childhood memories of having lived here with our president, Paul Edelson. Ira, thank you for coming. Uh, I'd like to make a comment that uh, this is what I would call a follow-up interview. Because in 2003, Ira was here with Ginny Richmond and Marge Edelson, and they talked about uh, the house and, uh, and living on the property and gave us a trove of information, tons of, of pictures uh, of, the, of the family and everything else. And each one of them is annotated on the back as to what we're looking at. And the same with the, with the houses. So, with that, uh, we'll get, we'll start with talking. So, Ira, tell us a little bit about your uh, birth and everything here. Well, I was born May 21, 1934, uh, at Lenox Hill Hospital, Borough of Manhattan, New York City, and I came down here when I was probably three weeks or four weeks old, and I lived in the big house in those days uh, with my parents and a nanny, and uh, being of German background, we called the Schwester, and uh, my grandparents, uh, Florence Haupt and Ira Haupt, and Florence, uh, uh, the German name for grandma is Mamama, and we said, was Umama, excuse me, we used to call her Mamama. So we all lived in the big house while the little house was being built for us. And I remained a uh, legal resident of uh, this place, it was uh, the residency in those days was RD1, Asbury Park, New Jersey. I think that's what my uh, draft card said when I enlisted into the military. And uh, I was here until we sold the property to the Turners in 1965. And then I changed my uh, legal residence to uh, New York City. And so I have a pretty good history of uh, a good part of this place. And what I don't remember, uh, I have uh, stories that my mother and father told me and pictures that I have made copies of and given to the uh, museum here. So they have everything that I have uh, from uh, uh, the history of the farm. Amazing. Now, did you live here year round? I lived here year round. Uh, my grandparent, my grandfather did not. He lived in, uh, in Manhattan. Uh, at 730 Park Avenue. And then when the Depression came, he moved, uh, he couldn't afford it, and uh, he moved to uh, uh, the Waldorf Astoria, believe it or not. It was cheaper than owning a co-op. And then when he made some money back in the 40s, he uh, went back to 730 Park Avenue. He put his apartment there in uh, 1940s for $5,300. That's 71st Street and Park Avenue. You know what those things are worth now. Uh, we lived, my father, our family, lived on the farm all year round. And uh, my father and grandfather were members of the New York Stock Exchange. Now your father was Stuart. My father was Stuart Haupt. Uh, he had been a junior partner at uh, my grandfather's firm, Ira Haupt and Company. But he left that firm in 1941 and became independent and ended up a specialist on the New York Stock Exchange uh, in conjunction with my grandfather's firm and another firm, E.D. Smith & Company. Uh, so he would commute every morning, and uh, they'd take the 805 train from Elbron Station. And they'd park the car by Richter's garage, and Richter would fix it up one of every six months when you had to do that. And uh, uh, we, they'd get on the 805, and there were club cars in those days, two club cars in the back of the train where you could get coffee and everything, and you know, a guy in a white jacket would serve you the coffee and all of that stuff. And the train went to Hoboken, 
and then you take a ferry across and walk to the exchange. So that is what my uh, father did until uh, the Second World War, uh, when it was hard to get uh, gasoline uh, rationing uh, stamps here. Uh, so after, uh, let's see, 1941, when the war came, uh, my father was the air raid warden for Route 35 out here. And the uh, way, I think in 43, let's see, it was nine years old. Yeah, nine and 43, we moved to New York City for two years until the war was over uh, because of uh, the transportation problems uh, here. We come down in the summer, naturally. But we used the, uh, we had to uh, use our gasoline stamps uh, for the farm people and everything. Uh, so then we returned down here in 1945, and I was sent away to prep school in Heightstown, New Jersey, which is 40 miles down the road here, or 30 miles down the road here, uh, near Princeton. And uh, I uh, boarded there for seven years from uh, 11 years old to like graduated uh, prep school, then I went to college and everything. And so this was my home. My parents uh, moved into an apartment in New York City in 1952. My father had had a heart attack in 49 and uh, thought that uh, he shouldn't commute all year round from here. Uh, so he, uh, we took an apartment in New York City and uh, they would be, uh, my parents would be there uh, for the winters and come down on weekends. And I would still be, uh, this was still my residency. I didn't have a room in that apartment in New York City because this was my place. I had a room here. Uh, and uh, so this is always my, uh, my home, okay, even though my parents lived elsewhere. Did, uh, you, did you attend any Ocean Township school? Yes, I went to uh, Oak Ridge School where, uh, you know, where the, the old one was in town. And uh, Chief Isley used to be on the hill there, separating all us kids from fighting each other. And uh, uh, I was there through thir second grade, oh. no, third grade, third grade. Fourth grade, I was in New York City. Oh. So I, was, I had school there till third grade. Then I went to New York City for two years. And then when I was 11 years old, I went to the Petty School in Heightstown, New Jersey. Then I went to college, to Williams College. Now let me ask you, this was a working farm. This was uh, a working farm. Uh, divide the farm period in two sections. One with my grandmother, Mama Ma, and the other one with uh, my step-grandmother, who I called Aunt Enid, Enid Howard. Uh, Enid married my grandfather. My grandfather became a widower. Uh, when I was about three years old. And yeah, and my mother was having my sister, because we're three years apart, and my grandfather then wed uh, Enid Annenberg. So ever since I was three years old till uh, Enid died, uh, that was really my uh, loving grandmother, because my grandmother died uh, uh, when I was just before I was three. So I didn't know my first grandmother that well. So the farm, when uh, Mama Ma had it, Mama Ma bought the farm. Uh, the story is told by my mother, because uh, she trotted around with Mama Ma to all the savings banks. And I think she, Mama Ma took out $5,200 or $5,300 and bought the place, 40 acres. And the other acres next door were bought later. And so this was really Mama Ma's farm. Mama Ma, uh, her maiden name was Lusheen. In German, that's Lachheim. Uh, the Lusheens are a distinguished family in, uh, in the New York area. Uh, Solomon Lusheen, who came from the Rhineland, probably Hesse, uh, founded Temple Emanuel, which is the, I call it the Vatican of Reformed Judaism in the United States, which I'm still a member of. And uh, he was one of the founders, and my number two son has a oil painting of him. He was a clockmaker, and he moved from New York to Covington, Kentucky, where he married a lady from Cincinnati called Reese, who was the BVD family. 
then I think he had the unhappy uh, thing. He joined the uh, the Federalists and uh, died in the Battle of Chancellorville uh, on the Union side. Uh, and uh, with luck, we had children. And those were Lushims. So the original Lushim moved out to, uh, to the Ohio Valley, to Cincinnati. But a lot of Lushims stayed around here. And that was my uh, grandmother, Florence Lushim. And uh, she met my grandfather, uh, who uh, has Hungarian background, German-Hungarian background. Uh, the Haupt side of the family uh, came from what was in the old days uh, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire in Hungary. Uh, the town is no longer there. It got bulldozed by the Russians in the Second World War. It's called Ul, U-A-H-L. You can look it up in an 1850 uh, uh, geography book. It's there. But it is now, you know, Hungary changed. They, uh, the country didn't stay the same. So that town, or where it was, is now on the Romanian side of the border. Uh, where uh, uh, It's not on the Hungarian side of the border. And the, uh, and, uh, the Haupt was uh, my grandfather, Adolf. And he came here in 1876 uh, at 11 years old by himself. And uh, there was a uh, contingent of Ullers uh, living in Brooklyn. So he went to Brooklyn to hang around with the Ullers. And he married uh, an Uller lady, young lady, my great-great-grandmother, uh, Mary Haupt. Uh, Mary Prescott, I think was her name. And uh, that is how the house got here. And uh, my grandfather uh, met uh, uh, his uh, first wife, uh, my grandmother, uh, when he was just starting out on Wall Street as a runner. And uh, they, uh, I think the Lushims did not, they anglicized their name from uh, Valheim to Lushim. Uh, they uh, did not uh, appreciate uh, that uh, Lushim was marrying a little help that just, you know, probably just came over the boat. Uh, but it worked, and uh, he worked his way up to have a brokerage house named after him. Was uh, it at that point? When, at what point did they come here? Then they came down originally in the 20s, and they rented a house near the Deal Casino on Ocean Avenue for a couple of years. Okay. And then in 32 or 31, I forget what year, uh, my mama decided she wanted to have a country place, and they bought this place. Oh, okay. And it was run as a farm. Uh, we had cows. There is a cow barn back here that I think is as beautiful and is as better condition inside than the tower. And I hope you guys uh, at some point uh, get a chance to uh, clear it out and everything. Because, you know, it was next to our little house. And one of my favorite things uh, when I was young was going in there and having milk fights, fights you know, pulling the teats and everything with somebody else. And that was a lot of fun in those days. Uh, <laughs> so we had cows and we had chickens. Uh, in fact, my first pet was a white chicken. I think you have a picture of it. Okay. Snow White, we called her. And uh, that was my first pet. And not a dog. The next one was a Cocker Spaniel, but the first one was a chicken. And not only was it a regular farm with tractors, and in those days you had carts that you pulled things with, you know, that uh, uh, with horses and stuff. You, uh, I think it was a J.I. Case tractor we had in those days. I think I'm a, my grandfather ended up specializing in J.I. Case, believe it or not, uh, hmm. on the New York Stock Exchange as a specialist. Uh, we had, uh, besides uh, cows and chickens and, and things of that nature, uh, that kind of pigs and you know, uh, turkeys, uh, my grandfather raised dogs. English setters was his hobby. And the barn, uh, was for the English setters. Okay. Okay. And you had a kennel going out there. And uh, that's where the English setters were. And they won uh, lots of uh, prizes. Right. We have many pictures. Right here. You have many pictures. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then uh, also in those days, in the 30s, uh, people still rode. And uh, we had some polo ponies here because uh, 
uh, my grandfather's daughter, Sis uh, Kaufman, uh, uh, was a uh, horseback rider, and her husband, her first husband, played polo. So he had, we had polo. You, this place is the polo field. Where the okay. uh, so the polo field was, was here. right here. This is our polo field, all the way down here. Okay, I always thought it was on nope. the other. Oh, this was so the, this polo was the field. polo. This field. is the polo field, small polo field. Over there is where the cows were. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then those were the cows, and where the chicken coop is, and everything in the back. That's where they grew uh, the Second World War. They grew soybeans. I forget what they grew in the first one before that. And then we had in the center part. Uh, by the house right here, uh, we had greenhouse, and here we had a uh, vegetable farm for, uh, for I forget how many acres. Okay. And you know, we had tomatoes and everything else. You'd go out and pick uh, anything you wanted for, uh, for your, uh, now, for your did vegetables. You, did you have people that lived on the farm that worked the farm? Now, the people who lived on the farm is one worker lived in the tower. Uh, and uh, the superintendent uh, lived in the house in the back of the tower. That was the connection. Okay. Okay, and then the other uh, farm workers uh, came uh, on the property every day. Okay. And this is before the uh, Second World War. Okay. Uh, in the Second World War, unfortunately, uh, uh, there was no uh, help to run a farm. Everybody had to work in factories. So uh, the farm basically closed down. Uh, the you know, dogs had to be given away. And uh, we rented out the front part there to a farmer who kept cows. And then another farmer grew soybeans. This farm was one of the original soybean farms in the United States. This is where one of the, they started growing soybeans in the 40s during oh. the Second World War. And uh, during the 40s, naturally, uh, uh, my grandfather had remarried. Uh, Enid was a divorcee, and my grandfather was a widower. So they had remarried and lived in Manhattan, and would come down here on weekends and uh, spend the summers here. And the routine in the summers would be, uh, we had a Mr. Clemenson here, I'm talking after the Second World War, who was an expert on orchids. And my grandfather became a uh, orchid raiser. We had seven greenhouses of orchids, and uh, they won lots of orchid prizes and stuff like that. He went into orchids like he had gone into uh, English setters before the uh, Second World War. Okay. And uh, we had seven greenhouses, and which was very nice for me because, well, you know, I was a teenager then, and uh, if I'd go out on a date, uh, I would clip one orchid for my date and one orchid for her mother and give them that, and so I had no problems in life uh, when it came to stuff like that. Uh, I first date was Arlene Ludwig, whose uh, father owned the uh, DeSoto dealership in Asbury Park and lived down at Deal Road all the way at the end. Going way, 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 way back as an early teenager. I don't know what happened to her, but she... Lovely family. There's a rumor here that our chief of police, Eisel, lived here. Ah, during the Second World War, uh, we did not, but before uh, the Clemensons came, uh, Isley, we call him Chief Isley, uh, he moved into the superintendent's house and kept his horse, Pearl Harbor, in the cow barn. Okay. And my sister would ride the horse. And every morning, a uh, police guard would come up and pick up the chief and, you know, take him to work. Uh, and before the chief moved in, uh, the 113th Infantry Division moved in. They were on uh, Route 35 in the woods where the uh, Eatontown Circle is now. Uh, okay. Over there, way, way, and there, that's Wayside. And it was all woods there, and they lived in tents, and I think they eventually did build uh, uh, wooden barracks. But this place became a uh, uh, government, U.S. Army base, uh, and the uh, soldiers would be up in the tower uh, with binoculars and everything checking uh, for uh, 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 German submarines off the coast. This and, is where they could, did it. Could you actually see the, the ocean from that tower? Yeah. Uh, either they saw the ocean or they could see flares or whatever oh, it was okay. because the Germans would land um, uh, uh, spies uh, espionage agents 
uh, here. In fact, one of them uh, and was a lady who worked uh, for the uh, for the Harold for Harold Spear on the farm down across the street, across uh, okay. Route 35. That was Harold Spear's place. Okay. The firm was Spear Leeds and Kellogg under New York Stock Exchange, and Henderson was there. That was Henderson and Sons. For your information, when I joined the New York Stock Exchange in 1958, uh, right out of there, I'm still in my military uniform getting discharged. Uh, the Henderson family was the oldest uh, uh, continuing member family of the New York Stock Exchange, going back to the 1860s, oh. believe it or not. So that was a uh, distinguished firm. They were specialists of the New York Stock Exchange, too, and those were the, our neighbors uh, in this house. Uh, so uh, what happened during the uh, Second World War is very nice. You needed a pass to get on the property, naturally. Uh, and the soldiers, you know, they wore those type of helmets, uh, not, you know, the, they were the First World War helmets. They were still wearing them at the beginning of the Second World War. And uh, the problem was that my parents thought uh, everything was so well protected here that they could go out to the movies down in Asbury Park and everything and leave my sister and myself uh, here with our dog, uh, Sailor, which was a big Irish, uh, English setter uh, that uh, uh, would sit on the uh, top of the stairways in front of my bedroom and would not let anybody by through. So I would have a nightmare. The soldiers would hear me in the tower. They'd come, get on the door. Sailor would go running down and raise the hell. They, they could never come in and, and do anything. And they so they complained to my mother. My mother said, okay, so what? Uh, but we got along very well with the military. Uh, so after the war, that's when Clemenson moved in and we went to the greenhouses. And uh, instead of growing soybeans, uh, my grandfather rented out the rest of the farm uh, to a farmer uh, and, uh, that, and concentrated just on his uh, orchids. And that is uh, what uh, the way the farm was until he died in 1963. And then uh, I was, uh, my father died the same year. Uh, unfortunately, my grandfather in June of 63, my father on December 1st of 63, and uh, I ended up being the executor of all the estates and everything. So I had to sell the farm, and we sold it to Manny Turner. Uh, Manny Turner's daughter uh, married a guy named uh, Bob Mnuchin. Now, Bob Mnuchin was from the Jersey Shore here, belonged to Hollywood Golf Club. Uh, his kids, Steve Mnuchin, who's now the Secretary of the Treasury, and Alan, his brother, we all played together with my kids down at, uh, at Hollywood Golf Club and everything. In fact, when, uh, when, uh, the, when Turner bought the place, uh, Mnuchin's uh, ex-wife uh, moved into the little house. So I think Alan and Steve lived in the house that I grew up in. It's just a small world. Okay. Uh, in something like that. And uh, Steve's father, Bob, began his career at Ira Halpin Company. We're about the same age. And uh, uh, then he went to Goldman Sachs. And I left Ira Halpin and started my company. Uh, and uh, when he retired from Goldman Sachs, he became a, an art dealer. And he's a famous art dealer, S&M Gallery. And uh, my wife and I collect art. So we uh, were in the same... Uh, world, what used to be the securities world, now we're in the same art world, what can I say? That's the world great. doesn't change that, uh, that much. The, uh, now the Oakhurst area, what was that like? like in the, This in the was place? farmland, I mean okay. woods, all the way down. The closest house was the uh, Henderson house. Then on the other side of Whale Pond Road, uh, you had... Uh, uh, so the guy's name's, uh, now I'm forgetting. Uh, Walter Reed. Yeah, Walter Reed's daughter lived okay. on the corner, was friendly with my mother. And uh, then you had Walter Reed. Mm -hmm. And across the street was the golf club. And that was it. And then you had a big uh, uh, camp at the end of, uh, uh, of Deal Road, where Monmouth Road is. Right, yeah. That, and that. that. Uh, and I think during, right after the war, 
that camp was used as uh, an illegal uh, uh, military uh, uh, place to store weapons and stuff for the Haganah. Uh, before and uh, that was their storage area for the yeah, Ergen. Okay. No, it wasn't for the Hagen. It was for the Ergen. The Ergen got that stuff there. Oh, okay. So that's what that was for down there. Now over on like West Park Avenue and Monmouth Road, that was I guess the center of the of the town at that point. The town there was really no Roosevelt Avenue and Monmouth Road was it, and then you had go you went further down and you hit the school, right? And that was it. And you had, uh, coming down Monmouth, uh, before you hit Roosevelt, you had a veterinary place on the uh, okay, which uh, is east still side. There. Yeah, and that's where all our dogs were taken care of and everything. And when we built the swimming pool here, uh, the Richters, who had Richter's Garage by the Elberon uh, Station, uh, they took care of the pool. Oh, okay. So we were very close to the Richters okay. and, and stuff like that. They took care of a lot of uh, stuff on the farm after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I would imagine, I guess the tower was, was really a home. There were no working equipment in there for a water tower at that time. No, uh, they used to hang, I think they hung the hogs there when they killed them. It was more like a smokehouse on the bottom part. <laughs> okay. okay, we should restore that. Yeah, I, I remember, yeah, that's, they, they sort of hung animals there. Oh, okay. Uh, after they were killed. So all and, then, that, and then you walked up a ladder type of thing. It's still uh, there. Yeah, and uh, I used to go out on the top okay. uh, and uh, play around. My parents didn't like it too much, but uh, I did. Uh, and, you know, halfway up there was a room, and that's where somebody, one of the workers lived. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in the process of restoring all of this. It's a, I think I'm going to take you out to show you something. And, and next, between the cow barn and the... Uh, 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 the water tower and the superintendent's thing, you have a uh, ice house down there. Really? So dig down there, there'll be an ice house. Now, where In fact, is I'll, I'll go out and point it to okay. you. Right down here. Right here. Okay. okay. And that's where we kept our ice. You know, in the old days, uh, you didn't have electricity that much. So you had an ice house and you mm -hmm. kept things down there. That's the ice house. Now, did it, obviously somebody cut the ice and put it in there in the winter time. Yeah, but by the ice. Oh, yeah, okay. the ice man would come and okay. would go in there. Okay. And Good everything. Enough. And uh, the only problem with living so far in from Deal Road is when we would have the big snowstorms. And then we would have to uh, uh, sort of dig ourselves out right down to uh, Deal Road. And that could take a little while. Yeah. And we had a few big ones. And I remember one big storm. My mother, my father was in court in New York. I guess it's, it happened while he was working. And we were there with just my mother and my sister and myself. And we had an Irish setter at that time, lady. And we were running out of food. And the only thing we had left was dog food. But it was high class dog. It wasn't really dog food. It was the food in the cans that my mother would feed the dog. Okay, if it was free, yeah, humans usually ate it. So there we are opening the cans, and Lady looks up and goes howling, Ooh, we're eating the dog. We're eating her food. So that's how we survived till they dug us out. Oh, Lady, so that one winter. A lot of fun. Okay. Let's see. Uh... Well, let's see. So, what year you sold? The, you sold it what? Nineteen sixty-five. Nineteen sixty-five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else can you tell us about the area that we would be certainly be interested that no one knows? Uh, well, Hope Road was not paved in those days, and one of the workers, Bob Goddard, what his name is, is in there someplace. Okay. Uh, lived on Hope Road with a his Finnish wife Hilda. Hilda was the lady who uh, was like the cook and everything that took care of all of us. And uh, she uh, originally, she worked in the big house, uh, helping uh, in the kitchen. And then she would help in our house. And then uh, she would uh, help other people uh, in uh, the area. 
a uh, guy named Dutch Unterberg. I don't think uh, uh, you're, you're familiar down here. He's from uh, further up uh, north, uh, south of Renton, in the Eatontown area. Okay. And uh, uh, he had a brokerage house, C.E. Unterberg Tobin. Uh, this was a Wall Street area in those days. Uh, the uh, Wall Streeters did not go to the Hamptons like they do now. Uh, the Hamptons and everything like that, those are potato farmers out there in those days. Uh, and it was before uh, you know, Levitt's, after the first Second World War, built the first uh, homes out in Long Island, and that, that changed the, the place. So this was a big place for uh, uh, brokers and everything. Uh, not only uh, Jewish brokers, but uh, uh, Christian brokers like the Hendersons and uh, other, other families down here. Uh, at the Deal Casino, the Deal Casino was a Christian club and the uh, uh, Hollywood Golf Club was a Jewish club. And we all had brokers. Mm -hmm. So we were all on the same train going to work on the 805 every morning uh, to New York. So we all knew each other down here. So you probably had a, there were a lot of guests here with your grandfather and your father. Oh, oh yeah, every uh, every everybody knew each other. Uh, my uh, the, the big thing down here in the summer is at this place on Sunday afternoon when television first came out, and my grandfather had a television set, and they would play gin, and it would be my grandfather, Adam Gimble, that's Gimble Saxmith mm -hmm. Avenue. Uh, Lou Schwartz, that uh, was a toy company, and uh, who, oh, oh, what the, who was it, the, is, the son became, was the head of uh, Disney, uh, who am I thinking of? Huh? Eisner. Eisner, yeah, Monroe Eisner, yeah, an Eisner, okay, and they'd be playing, and they, and uh, Sophie Gimble was Sophia Saxon in those days, that was a big uh, couture place, she, she'd be hanging around there, and I'd be watching TV, and the only woman they would let in in the game would be uh, Enid. She was the only woman that they'd let in to play uh, cards. Okay. And this went on all, all, every summer, every Sunday. And the ball games would be going. And my grandfather was a Dodger fan. And my father was a New York Giants fan. And uh, when my father became 40 years old, my sister and I thought the best thing we should do his life begins at 40. We did two things. We bought him uh, 10 lessons at Arthur Murray, and we bought him two shares of the New York Giants so he could go to the annual meetings of the New York Giants. Well, when the New York Giants were sold and they moved to San Francisco, you never saw such a sad person in your life. My father had taken the, uh, the shares, the two shares, and put it in a, uh, a glass tray that you'd serve drinks on and everything. Took the tray broke the tray, took the stock out, and sold the two shares. And that was the end of uh, the Haupt uh, affair with the New York Giants. Okay. So that was interesting stuff. Well, these are, all, these are all things that, you know, if you don't say them and we record them, they're lost. Oh, yeah. We had the gimbals and everybody were right here. And I, and I guess you belong to Hollywood. Yeah, we all belong to My father was uh, chairman of the uh, social committee which means he uh, arranged all the dances and hired the bands. And the big band that he hired was Ted Strader, which is like uh, the uh, Peter Dushin, like Peter, Dush, Peter Dushin's uh, arranger uh, worked for Ted Strader, because I know Peter from New York. And I gave him a Ted Strader record, I found one, and they had it made into a CD. And uh, I, I gave it to him, and my father would, uh, hired Ted Strader for all the dances. Now, Ted Strader uh, played at the plaza in those days. Okay, so uh, college. Uh, you know, I'd go from college and stay at my parents' apartment, naturally, in New York. And I'd take a young lady out for, uh, for the evening. So we'd go to the plaza, and naturally, Ted Strader made sure I had the best table. And uh, uh, I would have a couple of uh, strips of orchids, you know, to put on the little girls. Thing. And so we used to have good times. Uh, those were the good days okay. uh, down there. Uh, you had uh, people either belong to the uh, to uh, Hollywood and Ocean Beach Club, or they belonged to Hollywood and Elbron Beta Club. 
We belong to Elbron Bathing Club in Hollywood. That's uh, what we did. And my grandfather uh, was a member of Elbron until they built the swimming pool here, which was done in the in the early 50s. Okay. And they built it where they had a little the wall garden that came out in the back of the house. I forget where. Where you have the tennis courts here, those were not here uh, when I was a little uh, boy. Uh, my grandmother, Mama Ma, took that area and made it into an English garden, a formal okay. English garden. So that is what was over there. Okay. No tennis courts. Okay. Now, uh, the Stussel Farm, tell us how that got there. Okay, my father's name is Stuart. His sister's name is Cecile. So they took the Stu and Cecile, Stucille. And that is how the name uh, uh, came. And the reason you have the thing with the dog is because my grandfather uh, raised uh, uh, English setters. Right. Oh, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, it's we a pleasure. We really, really appreciate you coming down and doing this. And uh, this is uh, another of the hometown histories where we try to capture uh, everything in the past uh, so that we can preserve that for the future. And once again, I'd like to thank you. It's a pleasure coming down here and uh, lots of luck for everything. And I am most happy that this property is part of uh, the Township of Ocean and not been broken up into a lot of uh, uh, small houses. This connected with the park next door, I think is uh, a great thing for uh, the county and the township to have. And I, uh, it is most, uh, most uh, happy that uh, this has happened. And I hope someday that you'll be able to reconstruct the patio wall down there by the little house and fix up the cow barn along with the, uh, uh, the tower and it'll be a very pretty place. Thank you. That's it. We hope you've enjoyed this look back at this unique piece of Ocean Township history and that you'll support its work to preserve the water tower. If you have a story to tell, please visit the museum or visit our website, oceanmuseum.org, and check out our past videos. Meanwhile, join us again next time for another edition of Hometown Histories.